Let's do it. Welcome, friends, to Manly Monday on Your Other Brothers, Navigating Faith, Homosexuality, and Masculinity Together. My name is Tom. I'm the co-founder and editor at yourotherbrothers.com, and we are glad you're here, or at least I am. Me and little Wormy over there. We're glad you're here. This is the fourth episode of Manly Monday, and today, it's really exciting. If you're new, you are hot in the middle of an awesome, exciting series. It's all about trying to relay what Your Other Brothers is all about. We're actually in the middle of talking about our five values. If you go to yourotherbrothers.com slash about, we have five values that we've sifted through. We sifted through upwards of tens of, of different values. And these are the five that we determined are the most valuable to us as a community in our faith journeys and in our storytelling endeavors in this community. And so last time we talked about hope, you can go back into the archives and you can listen to me ramble on about hope. I drew on myself and everything. Hope is gone today. Hope is gone today because we're talking about humility today. And that is our second value. And we've symbolized humility with a foot, a bare foot. And we're going to explain that in a minute. But first, let me take a sip of tea. So oddly enough, when I think of the word humility, one of the first things that actually comes to mind is Domino's Pizza. And let me explain. So Domino's Pizza, for those that are aware in America, I don't know, this might have been a couple years ago now at this point. I don't think it was like super recent, but fairly recently. Domino's did this like super repetitive, dramatic, like revamping of their campaign. Um, and they would do all these advertisements about how their pizza was awful, how their pizza was terrible. Because it, apparently, I don't know, I guess the numbers didn't match up with the other pizza companies, but they like scrapped their recipe, they did a whole new pizza, and they did all these commercials that just drove home the point that, that basically affirmed, yes, we sucked, we were awful, we had an awful pizza, but now it's better and we're correcting ourselves. And it was strangely like, I've never seen anything like that in advertising. It was strangely like refreshing to see you know, a really big company basically come out and say, yeah, we screwed up or we made a mistake or we didn't have a superior product. But then it got to the point where it was almost like too self-deprecating. And I don't know, I think it's just funny. It really has nothing to do with anything that this video is gonna be about. But when I think of humility, I, was, I always think of Domino's just being trying to be like so humble about how awful they were. And I guess they're better now. I don't know, I actually haven't tried the new Domino's pizza. Hit me up if you tried the new Domino's pizza and find it a superior product now because it kind of all looks the same to me. So when I was a kid, I thought I knew everything. I, th I mean, maybe this is just my upbringing. I feel like most kids though, when they grow up, they kind of get a sense like they know how everything works. And especially for me, like I grew up in a pretty healthy family and I always assumed that whatever my parents believed or whatever, whoever like in the world of politics, for instance, whoever my parents supported, that was the one candidate and that was the right way, the right philosophy, the right policies the right beliefs, everything. Like everything is filtered through your home life, or at least it was for me. And I'd look back on those years and it's kind of strange looking back now because I've grown up and I've traveled and I've met people and I've seen different perspectives. But back then, I remember like the first time I was ever confronted when I was a kid, it was actually with my cousin. I was confronted with this notion that this other candidate, this other political candidate was the one, was the right one. And it wasn't the one that that my family supported. And I just remember feeling so, this was like, what was wrong with me? This was like when I was, I don't even know, nine years old, 10 years old. And I had such a feeling of anger and wanting to lash out at my cousin because he and his family supported a candidate <laughs> that me and my family did not. And it's just that notion that like when you're a kid, you know what's right and your family knows what's right. Your mom and dad know what's right. And so if anything runs counter to that, it's an attack on who you are. It's an attack on rightness. And you have to like pursue a sense of justice in this world and fight for what's right. And how that was so threatening to me because I grew up in a pretty isolated Christian bubble and, and didn't really interact with people all that much throughout high school. So to be threatened with something that was different was hard and that was something that I had to work through through a lot of my young adulthood was getting out of myself realizing that there are other perspectives out there. Even in the world of LGBT culture, um, I remember disassociating myself for years and years and years. It's only been actually in recent years, like the last three or four years maybe, that I've started to realize my part in the LGBT story and the bigger picture that when I was a kid, the only gay people I ever heard of or, or noticed were the ones that were on TV that were the loudest and the most flamboyant and the most obnoxious, to be honest. 
and I couldn't associate myself with them as I'm processing through my own sexuality. But it's only been in recent years now that I realize I'm part of a bigger story, a bigger picture. And ultimately, when you look at humility, it is, there's like two sides of the coin. So there's humility on one side, and on the other side, there's pride. And ultimately, this whole, all these stories, all these experiences that I'm talking about today, it all comes down to pride, and it's a pride issue. And when we look at our values, our five values, we value humility because we see the destructiveness and the closed offness and the selfishness, ultimately, of pride. And it reminds me of a scene from one of my favorite shows, and that show is Lost. And this is a spoiler alert, warning. This show has been off the air for about a decade now, and I shouldn't have to say spoiler alert for shows like that, but I know how people are and how obsessive people are. So if you intend to watch this show, which if you haven't watched it yet, you're practically speaking never going to. But in any case, you've been warned. Anyway, towards the end of that series run, I think it was actually in the, it was either the last season or the second to last season, the two characters, Benjamin, Linus, and Jacob, are together. They're in a very dramatic scene. They're together in a scene. Um, and Jacob, for the people who follow the show, Jacob was kind of like the island god. I mean, they never gave him that title, but that's kind of, you could put two and two together, and he was kind of like the, the one running the show on this island, and he had some mystical powers and stuff like that. And I remember a moment where Benjamin, who was like the, Benjamin Linus was kind of like the Moses of this show. He was the one that would go to Jacob and receive instruction and do things and carry out Jacob's will and Jacob's orders for the island. And I distinctly remember this scene resonating on a deep level for, for this very reason about humility and pride, because Benjamin looks into Jacob's eyes and lays into him and says, I did all these things for you. I followed every command. I never questioned it. And what did I get in return? And he, and he like is pleading and pleading with Jacob and says, what about me? I'll never forget this. This is one of my favorite scenes in any show I've ever seen. And Jacob looks right back at Benjamin, right back at Linus and says, what about you? And oh my gosh, <laughs> that scene, that gets me every time. I've, I've rewatched that scene so many times. And the whole notion, what about you? Can you not zoom out? I interpret that to be like, Ben, zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And I look at that way with, with God a lot of times, honestly. Like, yes, I, I believe God cares about each of us, absolutely. And the, at the same time, God, who is orchestrating literally billions of lives and stories at the same time, I believe he is anyway, and to be able to zoom out a little bit and look beyond my own struggle, my present circumstances, my confusion about what's going on in my life and this person's life and how everything is connected, to be able to like take a step back and just trust. And that takes, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to do that. We want to be in control of our own destinies, our own paths. But to be able to take a step back, and in the case of our value of humility and the barefoot symbol that we use, to be able to take off our sandals, to realize that we're on holy ground, that we're interacting with our maker and letting him take the reins of this thing, this story that we're in, in not just in matters of sexuality, our entire lives, our entire beings, and certainly in this community, to be able to step back and be like, it's not about us. It really isn't. It's not about us. It's about him. It's about letting him do whatever it is he wants to do. And I'll be the first one to admit, as the one that's kind of heading this whole thing up, I have no idea what's going on a lot of times, most of the time. I have no idea where this community is going. I know it's been growing. It's been growing the last couple of years since we started. It's been growing. Um, do I have an idea of where it could go? Sure. But at the end of the day, it's not about what I want. It's not about my dreams and my visions. It's about what he wants, what God wants. And that's what we're all about at Your Other Brothers. It's being able to take a step back and let him take over. Visit our about page and read what we have to say about humility. We say, we admit not having all the answers and we are not our own. We take off our sandals on holy ground, stepping where God leads. And our verse that corresponds with humility is a very well-known one. It comes from Micah 6, 8. And it reads, he has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? There it is. So as we live out humility, we follow what we believe God's called us to do. We love others and we walk trusting him that he will provide day by day. So for some discussion, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic of humility. First of all, let's start basic. I want to hear, is there something when you were a kid or even as you were an adult, is there something you were so confident you knew everything there was about and something that threatened that like almost utopian state where you had everything figured out and this was the right way? 
and nobody else was right and you were right. I'm curious if there are other things. You can reference political um, upbringings, theological upbringings, all anything is game. I just want to hear like, yeah, ways that your mind and heart have shifted over the years as you've lived a little, <laughs> honestly, trial and error and living and interacting with people, experiencing new things. And then a secondary part of that is, do you wrestle with pride? Is humility something that's hard for you? It's It can be hard for me. It's probably not my biggest struggle. I think it may be probably, if I'm being honest, probably comes easier to me than a lot of people. But um, at the same time, like I know I have no idea what's going on and I, it's easy for me to like look up and trust that there's a bigger story. But I realize that for some people that may not be the case. So that's my second part of the question is, do you wrestle with pride and humility and do you struggle to see the bigger picture um, in this life? Is it easy? Is it hard for you to see that bigger picture and to trust a God, an invisible God that we can't see? Do you, do you struggle to let him take control and trust him that he is good? Comment either on yourotherbrothers.com slash video if you go to this Manly Monday page or comment if you're watching on YouTube, comment below on the video. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts and perspectives. It'd be great. All right, so it's time for the State of the Yab where we go around and look at your other brothers, all aspects of our community, all aspects of our website, and just catch you up if you missed anything. So starting with our blog, you can go to yourotherbrothers.com slash blog and read all of our blogs, recent and all the way. Two years ago we started, and you have two years of content right there for you. So let's start off with a post that I wrote. Big self-promotion move right here. So I actually wrote a blog post. I don't write as, as many these days as I used to now that I do podcasts and videos, but every once in a while I feel this uh, tugging and inspiration, right? So I wrote a blog post called The Fetish I Can't Talk About. And I bet as I said that, or as you see it on the screen, I bet there's some sort of recoil, because I recoil when I see the word fetish. It's kind of a weird, yucky word. But I, and I'm not convinced that everybody has them, because I in the post I describe what a fetish is. I give some definitions of it. And then I talk about this fetish that I have, but I don't actually talk about it, as the title kind of implies. Um, but it's the whole notion of shame and figuring out boundaries, figuring out what to talk about and who to talk about things with. And it was something I've been trying to get off my chest for a while. I saw somebody actually comment about fetishes um, a few months ago. It's been a while. And it inspired me, and I've had this draft sitting in my inbox for a while, and I finally got around to completing in that completing that thought. And um, I think you'll resonate if you rest, if you wrestle with issues of shame and figuring out how much is too much to share. I encourage you to check it out, whether you have a quote unquote fetish or not. And then another one of our authors, Matt, he's in the middle of a series, and he wrote a blog post called "When I Felt Like a Total Failure." And in this post, he talks about trying to lead a small group at his church and trying to navigate through relationships and friendships and budding romances. And it's in the middle of this series where he's talking about having just really one of the worst years of his life. And so this is the continuation of that story. So check that one out by Matt. And then finally, Dean, one of our other authors, um, our regular, regular contributors, he wrote a blog post called I Define My Gender Identity. And I love Dean's perspective and I love Dean's story and how open he is sharing about all these nitty gritty things. And he tackles the issue of gender identity. We don't have many stories like that on yourotherbrothers.com, but I'm, that's why I'm just like so grateful for Dean sharing so vulnerably about his story and his grapplings with gender identity going back to childhood. So if that is something that you wrestle with, that's something you're grappling with currently, check out that post. It is, it's one of my favorites, actually, that we've seen in recent, time, in recent times. So check out that post by Dean. Hot off the presses. This post isn't out yet. But stay tuned, because coming this week, we have a post by Marshall called When a Friendship Gets Tested. And I think we can all probably resonate with the notion of a friendship getting tested, about a rocky time, about something, about one of those like in-your-face moments where, oh my gosh, this could end. This relationship, this bond, this thing that we've had for X number of months or years could end feasibly. And those are scary times, but they're also testing times and they're revealing times and it shows the true foundation and merit of a friendship. So I think we can all resonate with that. So be on the lookout for that post by Marshall coming to yourotherbrothers.com this week. Moving over to podcast land, go to yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast, and you can catch up on all 31 now episodes of our podcast. We just did our 31st episode, and this is one we've been keeping on the back burner for a while because it's actually a follow-up. It's a sequel to an episode we did, I think it was our 15th episode, called More Than Our Sexuality. This is More Than Our Sexuality, part two, the sequel, the second one, we're doing it again, no holds barred. 
And I love this episode because we're not going to do these like super often. This is basically the quote unquote, the silly episode where there's not a defined topic. Usually on our podcast, we have a defined topic and we talk about that for an hour or two hours. Or if it's like super lengthy and weighty, we might split it up into two episodes. Um, But more than our sexuality, we are more than our sexuality. And this is a great opportunity on episodes like this to just sit back, me and my friends. There's three, three of my brothers on the show on this episode. And we just do some table topics. We talk about things like if you had to be a woman for a day, what would you do? And we talk about what that is. And we talk about like our books, favorite books that we've read. And in this episode, we actually did end the show. We ended the episode with some serious topics. Um, like what would you prefer? What could you choose if you had to choose between the perfect career or the perfect relationship, whether that's a spouse, friendship, family relationship, what have you, what would you pick? And we had some really substantive discussion about those choices. And we probably tackle 10 or 12 different topics and issues in that episode. And it's just a time for us to laugh and be silly and be serious all at once. So check out our podcast, check out More Than Our Sexuality Part 2. And if you're an iTunes person, you can find us there. Find us on iTunes where you can also rate and review us on iTunes. We'd really appreciate the support. And closing out the show, this is our mailbag time. And right off the bat, I need to point out something. One of our authors, Dean, the one who wrote the gender identity post aforementioned. He actually commented on our last, <laughs> or one of our most recent, actually, Manly Monday videos and was like, why isn't it called, why isn't this segment called the mail bag? M-A-L-E. I almost fell out of my chair and was like, why isn't it called the, the mail bag? So I need to put that out there, first of all. And if you guys have a burning, like, passion to see this name change happen, to transform it from mail bag to mail bag, Please let your voices be heard because democracy wins, y'all. Because honestly, we're not going to change it if nobody cares. But if lots of people care, we might. We might. So now that that's out of the way, I have an email that I wanted to read. You can email the show anytime. Anytime. Email the show. Monday at yourotherbrothers.com. Um, heard from several people since we started this video series. Love hearing from people. Keep those emails coming. You can respond to anything you have. You can share some of your story. You can use that email. You can email me whatever you want. I'd love to hear something from you and respond back. And I always respond back. So I wanted to read this email from one of our readers. He's actually referencing the scripture mentioned in the last Manly Monday where I talked about hope. And he says, I find myself somewhat confused by the reference to scripture from Lamentations in the current Manly Monday number three. I do not understand the meaning of portion in Lamentations 3.24. I looked in the online dictionary and found that there is an archaic meaning of fate or destiny, do you think that is the appropriate meaning of portion in this case? So I'm going to read that verse again to add some context to this. But the verse is from Lamentations 3.24, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. And this got me intrigued when I saw that email. I was like, I'm going to check out what that word means and see if I can, you know, get some clarity on it. And it was really cool. Other translations of scripture translate portion into inherent inheritance or you're all that I have, you're all that I need, speaking of God, speaking of the Lord. Um, And I really like that. And that's kind of how I always interpreted it was this sense that I have nothing else. Like, this is it. At the end of the day, this is it. It kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier in this video about humility and recognizing the bigger picture, the bigger story beyond myself. And so that's kind of how I interpret Lamentations 324 is like, God, you're it. Like, this is, this is it. There is nothing else. I am nothing without you. And that's how I, how I view that. And so I really appreciated that email and that question. I'm all about questions and digging deeper. Um, so please, if y'all see something or hear something on these videos rather that you want to talk about and question and dive into, I'm all ears slash eyes because I'm reading your emails. In that same email, that same reader actually also wanted me to point out our Hulk Hogan doll that's right there. Yes, that is a Hulk Hogan inflatable doll. It's been there from the beginning, if y'all haven't noticed it or seen it. And I'm not going to tell the story of it today, but people who know, I mean, it's, it's common knowledge at this point why it's there. If you dig around, you can figure out why, why that thing's there. But I might invite him to join me in a sketch or something in the future. I think it's highly possible. All right, and finally, y'all, this is really exciting. I mention every week that we have a snail mail address. If you don't want to email us, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't want to, and you can write to us. That's awesome. That's an awesome alternative. We have a P.O. Box, Your Other Brothers, P.O. Box 843, Asheville, North Carolina, 28802. And people send us things all the time, letters and postcards and gifts. And y'all, this may be one of the greatest gifts we've ever gotten because as of four episodes of Mainly Monday, I've been drinking out of this beautiful, locally crafted Asheville mug. 
always with the best tea from our fans and followers. But moving forward, y'all, I have a new... It's so sad. This is going to be the last episode with this mug because we have a brand new mug and one of our faithful readers sent this in. Look at that beauty, beauty, beauty right there. Your other brother's the mug. I have always wanted a Your Other Brother's mug. True story. I drink coffee. I drink tea. Why do we not have a Your Other Brother's mug? Someone took it upon themselves to send us a Your Other Brother's mug. I'm ecstatic over the moon. Can't wait to be drinking out of this every single episode of this show. So stay tuned for that action. It, it looks so pretty. I cannot stop staring. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's it. That's Melee Monday, episode four. If you like what you see... If you love your other brothers, if you want to support us beyond the spiritual, beyond commenting, beyond keeping this community going, if you believe in what we're doing and want to support us financially, you can go to your other brothers on Patreon, patreon.com slash your other bros. All the information is there and we would love your support. Thank you to those of you who already do that for us and make shows, make episodes like these possible. Finally, y'all, our YouTube channel is still brand new. It's still shiny. We're still, you know, getting it going and getting this whole thing off the ground. Subscribe to our YobTube channel at youtube.com slash your other brothers. And please give this video a like, comment below, or comment on our video episode page on our website. And we're also on social media. I've neglected to mention that, but we're on all the socials. So if you're on Instagram, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, you can follow us on any of those networks at your other bros. Bros. At your other bros. And we'd love your support there as well. That's it, y'all. That's it. That's it. So for all your other brothers, my name is Tom. Encouraging you to say it with me. Speak meekly. Chase madly. And be manly. Everywhere in between. Oh, and also, remember, you are not alone because... Boom. <laughs>